Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm a senior software developer in the emulation department at DGW. And today I want to talk to you about how you can speed up your Asia DevOps pipeline. So let's take a look at the typical build pipeline. You can split it up into four phases. You have the setup where you check out uh, your repository, you initialize your variables, and you can install some tools that you uh, need during your pipeline run. Then you have the build itself that can produce various artifacts, and you need that artifacts to run automated tests against. And in the end, you publish your artifacts, your test results, and that's it. But uh, as everyone knows who works with pipelines, they grow really fast and features are added left and right. And in the end, it, uh, you have a very long feedback cycle and that slows down your whole development team. So what can we do about that? We can ask, uh, uh, we can ask some questions how we can optimize the pipeline. The first and most important question for me is uh, what are the use cases of the pipeline and what scenarios emerge from them? So let's take a look at one of the pipelines I had to optimize. It, you have your typical four steps, but they are enclosed in uh, uh, code uh, quality analysis and the build phase also produces NUGET packages um, that are then in an additional phase pushed and promoted in a separate feed in a, on a TJW server. And in the end, we create and bundle an installer from all the artifacts that uh, were produced during the build phase. And this is the whole process that we need when we make an official release. But an official release only is done about a few times a month. So what are use cases that are more frequent? Some developers may trigger a manual build, so they get an installer that they need for integration or performance tests. So they want that installer from their feature branch and they want it now. They don't care about the code quality because the, in a pull request afterwards, the code quality will be checked anyways. This is a scenario that maybe is, is about a few times a day. And then we come to the most frequent uh, scenario, the pull request itself. It consists out of the four typical stages, but it is enclosed in a extensive code quality analysis. So now we have all our scenarios and we have two options. We could uh, make separate pipelines for each of the scenarios, or we could make the pipeline aware of the scenario it runs in and, um, and adapt accordingly. So how can we do that? We can use variables and conditions. In the code snippet below, you see how we initialize some variables that determine in which source branch the build runs, if it's a pull request or if it runs on a feature branch. And we can use all these information bits to make a custom variable that tells us if we should do a code analysis or not. And then we can use it in a condition, like you can see in the code snippet on the top, where we have a task for the SonarCube analyze, uh, analysis. And depending on how the condition resolves, this code analysis is done or it is completely skipped. The same principle can be done for the whole installer phase. The installer phase consists out of eight steps and sums up to about two minutes that we can entirely skip if the condition below uh, resolves, resolves to false. For pushing and promoting NuGet packages, the, that is only needed in the scenario where we build for an official release, we can do the same and save four minutes in about 95% of the pipeline runs. So 
now we know how we can skip various steps, but what about the one step that we don't, uh, can not skip in a build pipeline, the build itself. So how can we reduce the build time? In our example, we have uh, four solutions, .NET solutions. The biggest one has over a hundred projects and the whole run uh, for, the, for the build runs about 10 minutes. By combining the four solutions into one and uh, consolidating the projects, merging smaller projects and deleting projects that are deprecated, we got down to six and a half minutes from the 10 minutes. Another thing we can do is, uh, as I said, for the official release, we need uh, NuGet packages of all our projects. This is done in the build stage. And here is a snippet from the Microsoft docs, how you can do that. We inject this one line, generate a package on build true into all the project files. And uh, then the NuGet packages are built during this stage. But you can see Microsoft also has uh, put a note there that this will increase your build time. So for how much? Let's take a look. We can make a condition in this one liner and uh, this uh, reacts to a build parameter that we can uh, put in from our YAML pipeline. And this uh, build parameter tells us the output path for all the NuGet packages. And if we don't set it, we don't need to build the NuGet packages at all. So in this case, if the output path is string empty, or if it's a project that's a unit test project, we don't generate NuGet packages. And so we get down from the already decreased six and a half minutes to about four minutes. So the next thing we can ask ourselves is, what can we do with the automated tests? Can they be cleaned up or adapted to a specific scenario? If you run your unit tests in an IDE of your choice, in our case, we are in a .NET framework uh, scenario, we uh, run it in Visual Studio or Rider. You can group the results by their duration and then you rethink, uh, rework all the unit tests that are not in the fast categorization. So a single unit test should never, ex uh, never exceed 100 milliseconds. And if you have a big solution with lots and lots and thousands of unit tests, this can make a really big difference. Another thing you can do is you can categorize your unit tests or uh, any tests uh, into uh, buckets of severity and only, for example, run the critical tests if it's a pipeline that's very dependent on a very fast feedback. Or if time doesn't matter, you can run extensive performance tests, for example. So it's really about finding a balance here. The last but not least thing that you can ask yourself is, is there a possibility to parallelize groups of steps? You can put steps into jobs and these jobs run on, on separate agents. And if you have more than one agent, then uh, these jobs can run in parallel. So that sounds like a miracle cure for all of our problems, but it often is not because if the steps are highly dependent on each other and the data they have to share is really big, the overhead of all that mitigates uh, the benefits of the parallelization. So sometimes if you have really independent uh, steps and do not have to share a lot of data, it is really awesome. Let's take a look at an example of another pipeline I had to optimize. Here we have two, uh, two stages with two jobs and one job uh, runs on an agent on our build server in TGW and the other job runs in Asia. They are completely independent from each other and if you put that uh, one liner where I, I put the green arrow to depends on empty array at stage two, that means 
both stages can start immediately after the pipeline starts. So before about they, they took about seven minutes because every one of the stages uh, lasted for uh, three and a half minutes. And now they run in parallel and you have uh, only half of the duration. Then um, you, then there is another example where you have three stages and the first one downloads some artifacts from previous pipelines and puts them in a shared folder where stage two and stage three have access to. And so with putting these lines depends on sta the name of stage one into stage two and stage three. They can run in parallel. And in this case, it doesn't really make a lot of difference because the pipeline was already really fast, but you get the idea. So the conclusion of it all is there is no one size fits all approach, but maybe a really time saver for me, uh, maybe not for you. But uh, the important thing is that you find your scenarios and focus on the most frequent use case and make it fast as hell. Thank you.